Everybody thinks that climate change is about melting glaciers and polar bears. I think it's a big mistake. This is 100% of people's story. I felt the water rising. And we went under. I knew I lost her immediately. I don't think scary is the right word. Dangerous, definitely. There is no more fire season. We have wildfires all year round. This is unbelievable. We used to have seasons back then. Right. And now we don't. This is a lake? Wow. Could Yemen run out of water? Yes, possibly. This abstract idea that the oceans are rising is the next generation's problem. Climate disruption is not a political issue. It's a moral issue. A thermometer is not Republican. It's not Democrat. If I've seen it in the last 10 years of my life, what am I going to see in the next 50 years? There's going to be more storms, and they're going to be worse. What have you done? Do you think it makes sense to build or just give up? I really don't think the people are going to give up. You don't want to be on the side that said I had a chance and I didn't do anything. You've got to bring an understanding. There's an urgent need to change things, or it's all going to be gone. People need to help make it right. Let's go get it done! If we think that there's something can be done, then let's do it. This is about survival. This is the biggest story of our time. You're not going to get it done without a fight. And that just starts with millennials standing up and saying, we're demanding action. The world is going to change. Whether it becomes completely catastrophic, that depends on how quickly we make the change. Thanks for the, um, the video. That was Jerry Brown at the end, the former governor of California, saying, you're not going to get it done without a fight. I could not agree more. Carbon dioxide emissions are on the rise, and so is the global temperature. The science is irrefutable. We're running out of time on climate change. Current policies and pledges are insufficient to avoid a world of increasing drought, hunger, disease, and pandemics migration, conflict, and destruction of nature, livelihoods, and physical assets. All of this will inevitably impact corporations. Over 35% of total emissions are due to companies. So without tackling corporate emissions, we cannot uh, solve the climate change problem. Companies are facing a massive challenge to decarbonize their businesses. Emissions must be reduced by 7% per annum net of growth until 2030 in order to have a realistic chance of stabilizing global warming. However, excluding COVID effects, emissions are in fact rising in aggregate across all companies. Climate change is a significant risk to many companies, especially the high emitters. Emissions, regulation, taxation, and litigation are becoming a reality and not simply a threat. Increasing numbers of companies also face disruption from cleaner technologies and competitors. Customers, employees, and investors will avoid dirty companies. So all companies should be taking urgent action on climate change in their self-interest. Regulation of emissions disclosure is coming very soon. It's all but certain that there will be a global agreement for mandatory disclosure announced at the November COP26 climate conference. The EU has committed in law to reduce emissions in Europe by 55% by 2030. As a result, carbon taxation of heavy industry has already begun under the emission trading scheme. The industries impacted include steel, chemicals, cement, and utilities. The market price of carbon under the scheme has increased from 5 euros to 60 euros per ton, creating billions of euros of additional cost to many European companies. This will lower profits and take money out of investors' pockets. Here are some uh, examples of how climate change is creating major costs and liabilities for specific companies. Pacific Gas and Electric is the example um, here. California's forests have become a tinderbox due to 
drought exacerbated by climate change. In 2018, a 40-power line owned by the utility Pacific Gas and Electric started the deadliest fire in California's history. The company was forced to file for bankruptcy protection due to $30 billion in damage claims. In 2015, General Electric expanded its exposure to coal power generation equipment through the purchase of Alstom for $10 billion. But between 2013 and 2018, coal generation fell by 25% in the US and Europe, and renewables rose by 26%. As a result, profits in G's power generation division collapsed, resulting in a $23 billion write down. Another example Royal Dutch Shell in May. 2021, Shell lost a landmark legal case. The Dutch court ordered them to cut their direct and indirect emissions by 45% with immediate compliance. Critically, customer emissions were included in the judgment, requiring cuts in production. After the judgment, the Shell CEO announced that Shell would accelerate its emissions reductions in order to comply with the judgment. The case set a broad global precedent for future environmental litigation. A similar lawsuit is currently being fought against Total. The CEO of Client Earth, an NGO employing over 150 lawyers engaged in suing corporate polluters, threatened after the judgment that there would be a growing wave of strategic climate litigation to hold companies legally accountable for their environmental destruction. ExxonMobil's share price has languished for years as the company pursued growth in oil and uh, and gas output. However, this year, five new climate-competent directors have joined the board. Two were invited by the company, but three were forced onto the board by the activist ESG investor, Engine No. 1. Engine No. 1 had clear evidence and justification to win the vote because Exxon did not have a credible Climate Action Plan. Investors have begun re-evaluating climate change risks. The cost of both debt and equity capital for dirty companies is increasing as many investors have started to systematically incorporate corporate emissions into their underwriting processes. Good companies understand that it is in their self-interest to reduce their emissions. There has been a dramatic growth in ESG funds, nearly one in three dollars of inflows into global equity funds this year have been into ESG funds, which now total over one trillion dollars. Despite all of this, most companies and asset managers are failing to take sufficient action on climate change. Only three percent of listed companies have science-based emissions targets, and hardly any, any have a plan to reach those targets. Most companies are doing as little as they can get away with. And most asset managers are passive and ineffective and not protecting their investors. The biggest investors, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, voted against almost all climate resolutions in 2020. There is a necessity for all companies to produce and implement a serious climate action plan to decarbonize their business. Disclosure and targets without a credible short and medium term plan are wholly inadequate. The necessary components of a climate action plan are very straightforward in in, in concept. TCI's ESG policy requires the companies in which we invest to disclosure emissions and reductions targets and have a credible low carbon transition plan. We vote against directors and will file disapproval resolutions at HMs where disclosure plans or actual reductions of emissions are inadequate. This year, we voted against the re-election of the CEO and chairman of Union Pacific, as well as two directors of Charles Communications, because their climate change action plans were either non-existent or inadequate. Some TCI investors have been asking me, are you trying to make money or save the world? They tell me if you're only trying to save the world, then they will have to sack us. But they've not understood that companies with low emissions benefit competitively and command higher valuations. TCI has supported a new global initiative called the Say on Climate. 
The purpose of the say on climate is to force mandatory disclosure of both emissions and plans. Here um, is an example of a, a say on what a say on climate resolution looks like for charter communications. CCI filed this resolution at the AGM of charter. It resolves the board of directors of charter disclosure emissions and plan to reduce those emissions and provide shareholders with a non-binding advisory vote to approve or disapprove the plan. Mark Carney, the UN Climate Envoy, supports the same climate initiative as a necessary accountability mechanism. In October 2020 at AENA, the first the Spanish um, uh, airport group, the first ever say on climate resolution succeeded. Shareholder pressure from TCI forced management to improve its climate action plan and to back an annual vote on this plan. 98% of AENA's shareholders, including BlackRock and the government of Spain, voted for the say on climate resolution. The company's new climate action plan includes a large capex plan to self-produce 80% of the electricity needs by 2026. Many TCI investments are the leading companies that have now adopted the say on climate. Here is a, uh, a, 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 some examples. Some say on climate resolutions filed by TCI failed, unfortunately, due to management opposition. In conclusion, you as asset owners should be actively working to help end dirty finance. Not to save the world, but that is a bonus, but because climate change increasingly poses one of the biggest long-term threats to your investments. And this, um, logically, asset owners should be firing their asset managers who fail to properly take into account and engage on climate risks in their investments. Shoulders have many options for activism and should use all of them where appropriate. NGOs are playing a key role in pushing for action through AGM resolutions, campaigns, and litigation. At the moment, we are relying on NGOs to do the hard work because asset managers are so passive. And finally, um, a word on the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, SIF, they're one of the large world's leading funders of climate change action. Um, the foundation has $6 billion of assets and uh, this year will um, is expected to give away over $200 million in climate change grants. Their ending dirty finance strategy includes a raft of uh, advocation, advocating, advocating for regulation, plan verification, taxation policy and litigation. So um, with that, um, I will say thank you for this opportunity to, to, to uh, speak to you today. And um, um, Sif and myself are always happy to assist any of you here today. Thank you.